Well, thank you all for being here today. This presentation is based on ongoing research work conducted by colleagues in four countries, including Nepal, Namibia, Mexico, and Guatemala. Research in Petén, Guatemala, has been conducted by CIFOR with recent engagement by Biodiversity International under the research program on policies, institutions, and markets. It looks at what we consider to be important next generation common research issues. That is, following what we have seen in, in previous presentations uh, of right recognition and devolution processes to the commons around the world, what happens after communities get the rights. Based on the analysis of reform processes in Guatemala, I will discuss the sources, types of investments that occur following the recognition of management rights through community forest concessions in the Mayan Biosphere Reserve. We argue that right devolution processes in the commons trigger new forms of investments that have led to better resource management and livelihood outcomes. So, as we have seen from Peter's presentation previously, policies to secure tenure rights have resulted in reforms and processes of right devolution around the world. The institutional mechanisms chosen to formalize rights differs across countries and regions, with various degrees on the extent of bundles of rights recognized. Understanding who is investing and the degrees uh, and the investment patterns and how investment patterns evolve over time is still fragmentary, raising the need to analyze how communities can overcome barriers to investment and deliver sustainable development. While we observe that most literature examining right evolution processes analyze social and environmental outcomes, we seek to unpack the investment black boxes. To do this, we develop a provisional theory of change that analyzes the relationship between the context of community rights devolution investments and social and environmental outcomes. Research, based, research is based on comparative case study approach that evaluates patterns across studies, countries regarding the sources of investments, the investment mechanisms, the investment volumes and outcomes, and expected and realized returns. So this case study analyzes community forest concessions in Guatemala that is located in the Central American region. Forest concession contracts are 25-year contracts between the state and an organized community group granting concessioner members rights to extract and manage timber and non-timber forest products and implement tourism activities in protected areas. The devolution process in Guatemala emerged from constitutional reforms that led to the development of environmental regulations and the establishment of the Mayan Biosphere Reserve in the late 1990s. The process was influenced by peace accord negotiations that called for the recognition of community acts and rights to resources in protected areas. The emergence of community-based secondary organizations such as the Association of Forest Communities of Petén, ACOFOP, was key in upscaling the process of recognition and granting of community forest concessions in Petén. It is important to note here that the establishment of community forest concessions model in Petén took place amidst a landscape already marked by extractivist resource politics, including logging, rubber, and oil extraction. Communities already oriented towards market engagement. Different from analysis of the commons in other Latin American regions, Petén is a forest frontier area with high social diversity, low indigenous populations, and communities of recent settlement, of which those that have been granted rights to remain within the multiple use zone of this protected area depend on signing this type of contracts with the government. So you will see in this map the dark green areas are nine uh, community concession contracts that encompass around 350,000 hectares. So who is investing in community health resources in Petén? From our study, we analyzed that substantial investments from international donor organizations and NGOs were key in establishing the community concession model in the NBR. Approximately over $300 million were channeled into the system between 1989 and 2016. Initial investments during the first 10 years focused in setting up the regulatory and institutional framework involving protector area management and provision of technical assistance. After 2000, investment shifted towards sustainable forest management activities, the promotion of community forest enterprises, including a community-based secondary level enterprise, Forestcom, that has been key in building organizational, processing, and commercialization capacities. Since 2010, investment from donors had been considerably reduced. 
Current fund funding is channeled toward non-timber forest products, value chain development, and scaling up community forest enterprises. Different from, with, from what we have seen in other countries like Mexico and Nepal, public funding into this type of process has been limited. At the level of community forest enterprises, what we have seen is once the community concession was in place, investment from community user groups also emerged. While initial investments to acquire timber certification was broadly supported by NGOs, currently the certification costs a requirement to keep the contract active are fully covered by individual community concessions and managed as a group certification. Additionally, community forest enterprises annually cover the cost of fire prevention, monitoring, and control activities key to inform concession boundaries. As you will see in the map, this is the map of 2018 um, forest fire hotspots. You will see that the, forest, the community forest concessions areas are actually um, being protected from forest fires allowing for the conservation of the forest. At the community and the household level, we see that success in community forest enterprise engagement in forest management activities has allowed nine concessions to invest in lumber mills, value-added processing, creating jobs, and diversifying livelihood opportunities. The graphs show income at the community forest enterprise level, both from timber and non-timber forest products during the last 10 years. So we see that once production costs are covered, revenue is either distributed among concessional members or reinvested in community forest enterprises. At the household level, income from uh, community forest enterprises represents between 5 to 45% of the total household income and contribute to investments at the household level in housing, health, education, and productive activities. More recently, Investment from the private sector promoted with the support of NGOs have allowed for the emergence of new forms of investment, such as blended finance mechanisms, combining multilateral investment funds and commercial banks, and support in new credit mechanisms through the private banking system. These funds have been used as working capital for commercialization, activities, and expansions of non-timber forest product value chains, technical assistance, and value-added infrastructure. So, Reviewing our research proposition in regards to how investment is taking place in the commons, taking the lessons from this particular case study, we see first that barriers to common based investments are not insurmountable. Investment is actually taking place. Um, but the investment takes place and develops over time in stages and is conditional on the level of assurance of the stakeholders. Donors are the most significant investors although increasingly reduced, governments and communities, once community user groups have gained competency and begin to generate revenue from resources, invest heavily in public services such as road infrastructure, education and health, as well as capacity building to manage and administer concessions, strengthening rights, fire protection, value chain promotion, equipment and facilities. Results show that recently private sector investments is also increasing. We also observed that um, each sector has different roles and responsibilities. Different sources of financial investment enter at different times. Communities' perceptions on the private sector and investors are critical to facilitating investment. The formation of national level federations and associations has become a key feature of the common rights devolution process as they help to shape policy and regulation. Investment readiness develops through time, through phases, as a result of constant negotiation among parties. Public sector financial investment, whether from donors or governments, enters in the first phase when risks are high. They are key in establishing the institutions, the regulatory framework, and the infrastructure to devolve rights to communities. Donors, through NGOs, build technical and managerial capacity among community user groups during phase two, preferring these groups for investment. The institutional and legal framework revisions established through the initial devolution process, coupled with investments in infrastructure, education, and building social capital and institutions, begin to yield positive and environmental social outcomes. Private sector financial investments enter in phase three, once risks have been considerably reduced. A stronger representation, credibility, and assurance at the national level attracts these forms of financial investments. This shows that private investment is occurring, 
with assurance provided in different ways. These results show that community rights have fostered investment that recognize the social character of the commons and delivers environmental and social returns, as well as profits. The primary goal of the devolution of rights has a significant impact of the benefits that emerge, which in this particular case, the primary goal has been conservation. But we also see that community forest enterprises have assumed many of the roles of local government, particularly the provision of public services. So thinking about the future of sustainability, of outcomes achieved so far, in this case, we also see that um, requires reviewing the process of reviewing, renewing these contracts, as most of these contracts were signed between 1994 and 2002, which means that the contract is um, close to be finished. Thank you.